Hello, tonight in Arts News, Townsville is alive with art as two galleries both commence new local exhibitions. The Palms Gallery is showing an exhibition by three artists, each featuring a range of medium and styles, but all inspired from living in the tropical north. Pamela Black and Jean Versace both met as mature age students at their TAFE Arts course. The reason for combining their works in the exhibition is simple. Anyone who's been to the Palms knows just how much space on the walls there is to fill and to do so individually could mean years of work. But most of my paintings are about colour and the light and dark in shadows and sunlight. Um, I like to create three dimensional type works where I have something in the foreground like a fence or a gate or a doorway. I love, I love screen printing and it allows me to use colour. Um, very freely. I take it a bit more slowly I think than painting but uh, colour's the main thing. Yeah. That I... The Palms Gallery is a gallery geared more towards the commercial side of art with some of the North's best known artists displaying their works there. On the other side of the spectrum is the Umbrella Studio. The Umbrella Studio could easily be described as a more experimental space definitely offering an alternative. They're run not commercially but on grants. This exhibition is the joint effort of two Innisfail artists, painter Rebecca Sweeney and sculptor Stephanie Risley. It's entitled Conversion for a number of reasons, one being that the artists have swapped art forms. From painting to sculpture, to sculpture and, and from sculpture, sculpture to, to painting. painting. Yeah. And converting found objects and equipment, bits and pieces on hand. Um, a cupboard um, into a painted object or something that's junk into a chair, like no. Stephanie's yeah. chair. Yeah. Conversions will be at the Umbrella Studio in Sturt Street for another week and you can see the works of Pamela Black, Kath Mehery and Jean Versaith at the Palms Gallery until the 28th of April. And that's Arts News for this week. Back to you Nev. The appointment of Libby Quinn as administrator for the Umbrella Studio reflects a commitment on the part of the state and national arts funding bodies to local art in Townsville. It's also recognition of the efforts of the local art community who have kept the Umbrella Studio going over the years. And that the best way to do that was to get the local people who are making the art and involved with the art to write about it themselves. So that's what's happening throughout the year. And I hope that Umbrella will become a forum for discussion about art and ideas. I also hope that we'll start getting performances in the gallery so that it won't just be about visual art, but that there'll be an interaction between creative and, and visual art performance poetry, reading, what, whatever. Well, this Friday marks day one of Coral C92, and it's also opening night of Don't Forget the 40s, the joint production combining Dance North, Tropic Line Theatre, and the New York dance duo Perlman and Allen. We're lucky enough to be in Townsville at the invitation of Cheryl Stock and Lorna Hempstead, uh, managing director and artistic director of Dance North. Well, we're doing a um, piece called If War Were a Dance, which is a dance and a play mixed together. So it's quite a new form. It's not just one or the other. It's a, it's a real mix of the two. And this piece is um, an attempt to look at the complexities of the Second World War through um, one character who's looking from the 40s and one character who's looking from the 90s. We really enjoyed researching this. In fact, we did about a year of research in New York. We went to the Museum of Broadcasting and heard the shows. We went to the libraries. We visited the Battleship Intrepid. We went to the Library of Performing Arts and looked at old dancing from the 40s. And on our way here to Australia, we made a special stop at Pearl Harbor so we could see the memorial there. As a husband and wife team, they work together exceptionally well. It's great. We love it. We love working together. Yeah. We really wouldn't want it any other way. It's, we really try to help each other and support each other and be objective with each other so we don't make mistakes, but we really love working together. And that should be quite a production with four evening shows and two daytime shows, so there's plenty of opportunity for you to catch that one. Well, finally tonight, the Umbrella Studio in Sturt Street is holding an exhibition with a difference. It's a unique blend of contemporary art and the very latest computer technology. Fact, 
An installation publication is an exhibition of works by artists from around Australia which is currently touring the country on computer. The latest in computer-generated imaging technology means the work of Townsville artists such as Kim Mahood, Stephen Hall and Janet Gallagher will be shown off the wall as well as on the computer screen. It's also an opportunity for exhibition goers to take home an original artwork straight off the printer. That exhibition will be on until May 5 and that's Arts News for this week. Good night. Yes, thanks Nev. Hello everyone. Townsville City Heart Car Park received a facelift last week thanks to the efforts of the City Council's Community Arts Department, local Gavin Ryan and Year 12 art students from St Patrick's College and Townsville High School. Planning for the project began a month ago with numerous workshops. Rather than just pay some artist to, to do something that doesn't mean anything except to himself and maybe he'll look at it, it gets the community involved. The mural bears the message saving our seas, something which the students agreed was important living in this part of the world. People are out you know, trying to explain save our world, we're trying to explain save the seas. Because it's closer to home, you know, yeah. it's more in our area, so we should do something for our area first before we go to worldwide sort of stuff. Yeah. How do you think you'll feel when you drive past the mural and sort of... I'm going to the car good. and say, we did that! Yeah, it's yeah, like, like really seeing everyone come past and yell out stuff like, looks good girls, you know, it sort of makes you think, makes yeah, we good. did that, because it's going to be up for a while and you just think, when people go past, we did that. Good on them. And still on visual arts, one of Townsville's local artists, Vicky Lin, has returned from Thailand and has opened an exhibition at the Umbrella Studio. Titled Cross Your Heart, Wish to Die, the works combine ancient Thai symbols with her very personal imagery. Vicky tells us that going to Thailand was a deliberate move to see where it would take her artwork. These works here that I did in Thailand are full of uh, symbols and they're very busy images. Coming back here gave me the chance to really resolve what was going on over there. I, I left myself fairly open to the culture. The exhibition will continue until the 21st of May. The Perth Tucker Gallery was alive with the panoramic sounds of musicians from Pimlico High School this afternoon as they gave one of their gallery concerts. For those of you who wish to catch them, there will be another performance this Sunday at 11am. And that's Arts News for this week. Yes, thanks Nev. Hello everyone. The latest exhibition at the Umbrella Studio is a collection of photographic and video works by artists from Britain and Australia. Who Do You Take Me For is touring Australia and finds itself in Townsville as part of an exchange program between the Umbrella Studio and Brisbane's Institute of Modern Art. Not only does the program allow us to view international works, but it's also great for local artists. Last year we had a show in Brisbane at the Institute of Modern Art that was part of our exchange program and that featured four Townsville artists. So it's about breaking down those barriers between capital cities and regional centres and getting the work of local artists out to a wider audience. Through innovative techniques, the artists explore what it means to live in two or more cultures at the same time and belong to neither. That exhibition will run for two weeks. Reflections is the title of a new exhibition at the North Queensland Potters Gallery in Flower Street. For potter Mark Luton, it represents six months of work. As a full-time potter, the opportunity to hold an exhibition was a refreshing change for Mark, who finds little time in between orders for coffee mugs and casserole dishes to get really creative. I think when you have a look at the pots, they're a reflection of the environment that I live in really. So I live out at Blue Water and there's a lot of the pieces have um, shell impressions. There are a few shell forms. Um, there's a few bird shapes because there's heaps of different bird life where I live. Um, so it's basically just a, re a reflection of the environment that I live in really. And finally, the 1992 North Queensland Folkloric Festival is set to become a non-stop extravaganza of multiculturalism. On Saturday the 6th of June, the Civic Theatre and its grounds will become a stage for the world with displays of international food, sports and games. On stage, starting at 7pm, there are 17 different ethnic communities represented, ranging from our French community with a very short little play, um, <coughs> a Thai, the Thai dancers, Polish dancers, 
Indonesian musicians and dancers. Um, we also have a very nice performance this year by the Greek men of Townsville, which has never been done on stage before. It should be great. And that's Arts News for this week. Back to you, Nev. Yes, thank you, Nev. Hello, everyone. Once again, the Australian Festival of Chamber Music has brought audiences to their feet. Since Friday night's opening, the musicians have performed a series of chamber music concerts, both at the Civic Theatre and at St James Cathedral. Festival director Theodore Kucha is delighted with Townsville's response and has compared the festival with some of the world's most renowned. There are still eight Townsville concerts to go, commencing tomorrow at 11am and in Cairns on Wednesday the 22nd at 8pm at the Cairns Civic Centre. In Townsville, the Umbrella Gallery was transformed into an artist's studio as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander TAFE students put the finishing touches to this latest exhibition. The purpose was to draw attention to the Aboriginal style of artwork in line with Aboriginal and Islander Week and to demonstrate that they'd not lost their knowledge of their traditional art styles. Well, they have to know what they're doing, what they're going to be using and what it means so that when they do do a painting, the people ask them, well, has this got a story? They're never going to write a story and tell them all about it. A series of multi-art workshops is set to commence this Sunday in Townsville. Vision is an initiative of Interrec and supported by the Townsville City Council. I guess it's about looking at really interesting ways of integrating the arts and creating a, a really supportive environment for people to feel comfortable um, about being involved in that. The workshops will go for eight weeks, ending with a performance at the Festival of Townsville. Inquiries are welcome on 751471. And that's Arts News for this week. Back to you, Nev. Hello everyone. It's the fourth major production to be staged and mounted completely by the Cairns Civic Centre as part of the Council's ongoing commitment to supporting local talent. A musical full of opportunity in the best Broadway tradition. Really exciting. It's a musical vaudeville musical I guess would be the best description because it, it, it features perhaps more songs than dialogue and the songs are big production numbers and the story progresses beautifully through the songs. The cast of 20 is small by musical standards allowing the directors to really polish up the acts. Among the principals familiar names Jenny Cullen and John O'Donnell as well as many fresh faces. Chicago opens on Friday night at the Cannes Civic Centre. Also on the Cairns Arts Diary at the Far North Queensland Regional Arts Gallery. An exhibition by local artist Gary Andrews opens on Friday night. And this Saturday and Sunday, the opening of the Karnak Playhouse outside Mossman will see some of the art world's big names come together. The Gardens of the Centre for Creative Arts at Vincent is the venue for Townsville's Tropic Line Theatre production, Twelfth Night. For those with a preconceived idea of what Shakespeare is like, this is for you. Accessible, exciting and one to laugh along with as you wander through the gardens watching the plot and subplots unfold. I think people are a bit put off by Shakespeare. They think it's great art, you know, and you have to approach it reverently. Well, I think we're very irreverent. The venue, chosen through necessity due to budget restrictions, has worked in the production's favour. I like that and I like the sort of the bare bones of it which to me is Shakespeare, you know, the bare boards and a, fa and a passion, and it works that way, I think. Twelfth Night continues for the rest of the week. Is it art or just centrepieces for buffet tables? That's the question many may ask of the latest exhibition at the Umbrella Gallery. Food for Thought is the work of Townsville's John Walters, one of Australia's leading chef artists. His medium salt dough or pastry margarine, transformed into sculptures depicting Australia, have been displayed and won medals all over the world. And that's Ars News for this week. Good night. Yes, thanks Nev. Hello everyone. Over 300 paintings, sculptures, ceramics and photographs are on display at the Far North Queensland Regional Art Gallery. The Cairns Art Society's 46th Annual Art Exhibition has once again drawn interest and artwork from all over Australia. 
all up, it's worth over $11,000, so that's quite significant. I mean, they're divided up into at least 20 sections, but there are major prizes in this exhibition, and it's a good incentive for, for artists to um, exhibit their work. The two major prizes won by local artists. The overall open section, that was won by a Cairns artist, Julie Paulson, and it's a contemporary painting. That's a thousand dollar prize that's provided by the Cairns Port Authority. Another major prize was um, awarded to Jeff Kershaw, who's from in this area, and that's the Cairns Art Society Open Award. The exhibition continues until Saturday, also on the Cairns Arts Diary. Don't forget to be down at Grafton Street for the Grafton Street Festa this Saturday. The entire street will be blocked off to vehicles as the multicultural celebration kicks off at two o'clock. Two contrasting exhibitions are currently showing in Townsville this week. At the Umbrella Gallery, Scott Redford's painting is constructed, a wall-to-wall -wall grid of welded steel. Although it sits on the floor, the steel is sort of acts for me like a large minimal painting and um, it's actually made, it's constructed, it's welded in there, all the steel sheets and then it's uh, taken out. It's also made by um, specialised workers. From the hard cold steel to delicate textiles with intricate design, Coal and Stone is an exhibition by Keiko Schmeiser, whose work adorns the halls of Parliament House in Canberra. And we'll leave you tonight with the classical sounds from last Friday's chamber music recital at the Pistaka Gallery. Lynn Woodgate on piano, Tess Remy Shoemaker on cello, and Gary Tamlin on clarinet. Yes, thank you, Nev. Hello, everyone. When La Luna Youth Theatre coordinator Kevin Brennan was looking for a suitable play for his 10 to 13 year olds, he found it to be more difficult than expected. People, you can find fairy tales and all that sort of thing, but not much that really touches more closely on what their lives are like. Plus, even if you do find a good play, you have difficulties with numbers and then you have male parts and female parts, and sometimes it's just not appropriate to the town where you want to put it on. So we looked around at a few plays and looked at rewriting them and we realised it was just as easy to write another play ourselves, which we did. And we started off with the question, how can we write a play for 10 to 13s? What are some of the issues that are important there? Co-written by himself and Jack Aranda, the questing place is set in the mythical future. Written especially for this cast, it stretches their skills to the limit and should appeal to all ages. Performances are this Friday and Saturday night at the Civic Theatre basement. Still with young local talent, this Saturday at Townsville St James Cathedral, a benefit concert featuring music played by high school and university music students will commence at 7.30. And at the Umbrella Gallery, an exhibition of abstract paintings by artist Anne Lord, titled Incongruous Layers, will continue until the end of this week. And in Cairns at Comenos House, a joint exhibition of paintings, photographs, ceramics and children's artwork from organisations throughout Cairns will open on Saturday at 2pm. The exhibition will also be an opportunity for art lovers to bargain with artists to purchase original paintings or ceramics. It's all to celebrate Artists Week and fun in the sun. And on the Cairns Arts Diary, the Coral Society's Finian's Rainbow continues all this week until Saturday. And in Townsville this Friday, a piano recital by Ryan Daniel commences at 7pm at the Perth Tucker Gallery. And that's Arts News for this week. Yes, thanks Nev. Hello everyone. Many people are put off at the thought of poetry. It's boring, old-fashioned, not something they particularly relate to. So the presence of performance poet Komninos in the far north this month has been a real eye-opener. I think it's something that people do as a natural thing, so you can't wipe it out completely. And uh, every generation has its revival of it. You know, it sort of hasn't really made the move to television or radio, but there are enough people around Australia sort of making it a, a live performance event to keep it happening. 
His tour has been organised by writers at Curanda to foster writing in diverse community groups and he's been workshopping and performing from Mariba to Innisfail. You can catch Komnenos this week in Cairns as part of the Fun in the Sun program. Gold is Gold is an exhibition now showing at Artists in Residence Studio in Cairns this month. A mixture of ironwork, sculpture, ceramics, paintings and collage and a mixture of seven well-known local artists. It's common thread the use of gold, bronze and copper to highlight or colour. The perception that Townsville is generally a conservative city will be tested when Martin Sherman's Bent opens at the Civic Theatre tonight. Performed by Bachelor of Theatre students, Bent focuses on a pair of homosexual lovers in Germany during Hitler's regime. More than a portrayal of gay oppression, in Bent, love is the ultimate act of defiance. I think the story is so moving, it doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, two men or two women or a man and woman, I mean, I, I think that's incidental. Anybody who's interested in a, in a, a strong human story will find it um, moving and uh, I think the students do very well in performance. On the lighter side, a musical trio with a real cultural mix will perform at the Perse Tucker Gallery this Sunday. Greek, Latin and Hungarian rhythm starts at 11.15 with husband and wife Stephen Magnola Zorbas and percussionist Peter Stefanos playing an exciting combination of three musical styles. Two Mackay artists, Rosalie Woodman and Glenn Skine, returned to Townsville where they studied visual art to present Place, Person, Myth at the Umbrella Gallery. And that's Arts News for this week, Nev. Yes, thanks Nev. Hello everyone. Toadscape is the title of Gavin Ryan's latest exhibition now showing at the Perse Tucker Gallery. Normally left flattened on hot steamy roads to dry out, decay and blow away, these toads now have their last moments immortalised forever in Gavin Ryan's artwork. Many are hidden in what appears to be a scene out of everyday Australian life. There's a football one over here and there's a the beach scene over there and others are just completely just crazy dream scenes or psychedelic or hallucinations or something like that that's just off the air but most of them are uh, scenes that are recognisable and that people can, can find things that they relate to in them. Toadscape is an exhibition of sight and sound with Gavin's own musical compositions playing in the background and you can see Toadscape for yourself at the Perse Tucker Gallery until November 15. From Toads to Frogs, and Froggy is the title of the Townsville Little Theatre's latest production. A light-hearted adult fairy tale with romance, humour and pathos, all the ingredients for audience appeal. It tells the story of Froggy, who is an armless hero with invisible wings, and his love for the beautiful Roxanne Latour. Uh, he falls in love with Roxanne, he's totally smitten. Unfortunately, she doesn't love him, she loves another called Thomas. Froggy opens tomorrow night at the Railway Estate Community Hall. The Salvation Army op shop in Sturt Street was the source of material for the latest exhibition at the Umbrella Gallery. The Doug and Jerry show, as the name suggests, is an exhibition full of fun, with the works of two Townsville artists, Thierry Ariak and Douglas Thomas. Both originally from different countries and cultures, and both inspired by the colour of the tropical north. Nineteen different acts from a cross-section of Cairns performing groups will combine to present an evening of top-class entertainment when the curtain goes up at this year's Mayor's Command performance. Special guest for the event is Queensland Entertainer of the Year, Diana Peher, who will lead off the performances and the show starts at 8pm this Sunday at the Cairns Civic Centre. And that's Arts News for this week, Nev. <laughs>